da David is sitting at the back in the corner and um, I think it was four years ago or three years ago, Paul invited me to talk at this conference in London. And it was the first time that somebody had been present when I was speaking that was tweeting simultaneously. And I can remember standing here quite nervous because I thought, what's David going to send about what I say? Am I going to say something that is actually going to be quite damaging? That's not an unfair you know, thing to think about. How the world's moved on. Because actually what I'm thinking about now is, am I going to say something interesting enough and provocative enough that David is going to send it? So I actually want him to send something. Three years, four years, it's absolutely astonishing how our attitude towards social media has changed. So I'm sitting here thinking that I'm going to be videoed and so there'll be huge judgment by my team on my presentation style. So whereas historically I could make presentations around the world and not be seen, now I'm going to be captured. So my HR team will certainly be after me. They've described me as the most complex person they've ever met. So I'm sure they'll be fascinated by this video. Okay, so let's get into the substance. Hopefully they can juggle that introduction and cut out anything that uh, doesn't work. But let's get into this subject. So Paul, Paul invited me to come and speak to you as professionals about expectations. So what are the expectations that a carrier, specifically Lloyd's, may have for international loss adjusters? And the reason that I was absolutely delighted to take up that opportunity was because you as professionals are absolutely a critical part of our community. So as insurers and as carriers or reinsurers, we absolutely rely on your skill set to help us deliver our policy promise. There is absolutely no doubt about that. So to accept the invite, I was delighted to do because you are so key. There's a very squeaky floorboard here, so we'll move a bit. The headline that I guess you're really interested to know is what am I going to say about expectations from carriers on loss adjusters? Because that's the punchline. That's really what the, what the presentation is designed to be about, and it will be about. But you can't, I think, drop into that straight away. There needs to be context. So I see it as a series of layers that builds up into giving the answer around those expectations. Some of them not necessarily obvious. And I've given them titles, and I'll talk to each of them. One of them is environment and environmental. What's happening around the world that actually has an influence in what we need from the adjusting community? It may not necessarily be self-obvious, but there are some things out there, so we'll talk about that. The industry landscape for us as insurers, what are we facing in our businesses? What's happening in our industry? What are we up against? What are our challenges? What do we need to deal with? And that feeds into what we need from professionals like yourselves. Carrier response, so what are we doing given the industry challenges we're facing? How does that feed through to our needs from professionals like you? <coughs> I'll talk briefly about Lloyd's direction of travel, where we're going, and then move into three slides with observations on expectations. Just, just starting with the environment. Now, had I tried to define what I mean here, it would have probably taken two slides of quite close text to describe environment. Pictures paint a thousand words. <coughs> Some of you may know what this is, but this, based on my research, is the construction taking place of the world's largest wind turbine. World's largest. Some of you may be involved in this type of uh, work. Why, why does that matter? Why is that relevant? Because we as insurers are providing coverage for a range of these turbines, either in the construction, the assembly, the transportation, the operation. That's the world's biggest. It's huge. We have the risk appetite <coughs> to take those risks and underwrite them. But actually, at the point of claim, the delivery, 
we need experts that are able to understand that industry, understand those products and actually deliver for us. And this is an open question, and it's a question inwardly looking at the market, I would say, as us as an industry, is as we start to build out these products, have the appetite for this changing world, are we taking you along with us? So do we sit down with you and say, these are the products we're thinking of offering, this is the industry we're thinking of going in, drawing on you, bringing you in early on as we begin that journey. Because we're issuing this coverage and we're expecting that you'll be there when we need you. But are we involving you early enough in our thought process? And that's an open question. And this touches on slightly something that, that, that John made, is when you look at the, the insureds and the clients that we're providing coverage for today, their business are, f are, are extremely complex compared to 10 years ago, five years ago. You know, robotics in the automated production lines, embedded technology, cyber robots, automation, 3D printing, these are just examples. And you'll have seen them in the businesses that you've worked with. But it's moving at such a pace. And again, the question, it's an open question, inwardly looking at us as carriers, as we begin to talk to clients about providing new coverage, different coverage, expanding coverage, are we involving professionals like yourselves early enough? Because we're going to expect that there's going to be the expertise to actually be to go into these businesses and understand them. So are we doing enough with you is a, is a, is a question. And then if we look at disasters around the world, and these, these are four, and there's a theme to all of these. We have Thailand here, Sandy, Matthew, which is quite recent, of course, and McMurray. The, the common theme here for all of those is impaired access. So 35, 40 days, 60 days, you couldn't get in. The barrier islands in, on Sandy, off limits for quite some time, couldn't get in. Matthew, we're already seeing North Carolina, you can't get in. And some parts of Florida on those islands around Jacksonville, I think, are in the same position. It's mandatory evacuation still. You can't get in to service our clients. McMurray, 28 days of no access, unless you were the adjuster for the municipality. So what's the theme? What's the point? We have policyholders in every single one of those locations with a building that may be destroyed, damaged, a business that's impaired. They need help at that point in time. And part of that help comes through the insurance coverage and it comes through the ability to actually start the process. If you can't get in, arguably we can't start the process and the insured can't start to get back, get their life back. But that's changing, and the technology is out there right now to change that. So these are um, pictures taken by remote imagery in the sky of McMurray. Specific building in McMurray, this one here. That's what was left of it afterwards. And the challenge uh, I give to us as an industry is that we can begin the claims process based on that picture. Of that, I am absolutely of no doubt. The challenge for us as an industry is to grasp the technology that we've got and exploit it and use it. <coughs> Clearly, depending on the peril that's involved, can be slightly more challenging. But here, I don't think anyone's denying this is fire. The accuracy of this imagery is so precise, we know without doubt that that building is the same one. So this first section around the environment is very much about challenging us as insurers and, and us as a community and saying, are we working enough together to take advantage of the technology we've got and actually understand the businesses that we're seeking to insure? So are we sharing enough information? And one of the things that strikes me is if you just think about data, data alone, analytics, 
How much intelligence have you got in your business in the aggregate? It's huge. Are we sharing that in a positive way? For pricing, underwriting of risks. Is it challenging? Absolutely. And to flip side to, to John, because I should say this as well, for insurers, when we look at the current landscape, it is, there's excess capital, intense competition, disruptors, and pricing, I call it collapse. We can battle over the words. But what it bo bottoms out to is there is intense competition amongst insurers for business. The current clients that we have are absolutely critical to us. Absolutely critical. We want the renewal opportunity for those clients. But we are in a battleground, probably the most intense you've ever seen at an industry level, I'd suggest. To make sure that I, I, I look at this on a balanced way, though, I need to look at John and the client uh, side as well. If you were going to draw another picture here, looking through the lens of a client, if you like, someone running a business, it wouldn't be dissimilar. You know, extreme economic challenges, resource challenges, there'd be disruptors, there'd be pressure. They're, they're also seeking as businesses to develop and take opportunity. Maybe they have business ventures they want to pursue. So they're looking for risk transfer. But for us, these feed directly through into our expectations and needs of professionals like yourselves. We have to deliver the best possible claim service to our existing clients that we can. It's an absolute must, because that's the battleground we're in. So what are insurers doing? We, c we can't control our competitors. We can't control the amount of capital in the industry. Those things are totally out of our control. What we can do is we can actually control these features. We can tr control our operational efficiency. So how efficient are we? How do we use our people? We can do that. We can really invest in trying to differentiate ourselves between our competitors. And that comes through the quality of the service that we deliver, which you're part of. So when we're standing next to a competitor, we want to differentiate. And you are absolutely a critical part of that, what you do. You help us there. And we are reaching out more than we ever have done to our end client, the customer, and trying to really connect and understand their business. Many businesses are driving, driving very hard into those areas and trying to absolutely take those to the, to the maximum point. So when we think about expectations from professionals like yourselves, this is the backdrop against which we are operating now, which is intense competition. Every client absolutely matters, and those clients are also facing some pretty tough challenges as well. Just pausing there and thinking about the Lloyds market. Helpful just to sort of recognise the scale. 2015, we wrote just under £26 billion worth of income. It's a huge number, £26 billion of business around the world. 84 syndicates, so you can translate it to individual businesses, essentially 84. We're operating in over 200 territories around the world. <coughs> huge global footprint of activity requiring an international skill set. But the key, the key number on here for me, and, and probably for us, is that over the past five years, Lloyd's has paid £63 billion worth of claims. So we're averaging there around £12 billion a year. It's a huge number. Huge number. So imagine how many clients that affects. £12 billion. It was £12.4 billion last year which in some way, if you work for the Lloyd's market, you will have been part of that outcome. But where are we going? That's the key question. Where, where are we as a market going? Where do we aspire to go and what really matters for us? The world's changing and we, we all know that. The economic balance is changing and opportunities around the world are changing as well. For Lloyd's, we've set a vision and an objective 
which is that we will have access and we will be relevant in all the key international markets around the world. And that requires a shift because you'll see that we have been developing and investing in underwriting platforms in Asia and Pacific. And we continue to look at how local do we need to be. Because if you want to be successful in some of these territories, rightly, you need to be local. How you structure yourselves to be local is an open question. But you also need the support of adjusting professionals and experts in those territories as well. What we intend to deliver as well, though, is world-class claims management. That's the objective, world-class. But underpinning that is a leading service proposition. So to deliver that service requires help because we'll need experts to support us. So this is the piece that I expect may be of most interest to you. What, what do we think really matters in loss adjusting? Now these, these aren't, I work for the Lloyds Corporation, who as you know, may know, essentially we oversee the Lloyds market, work with the Lloyds market to help keep ourselves in the market relevant and support our clients. But I, I have taken soundings in the market to make sure that this isn't my voice alone that, that, that is here. So this is views from the market. And the two, the two towers, if you like, that underpin this, what really matters, what are we really looking for from, from, from the adjusting community, are really two solid towers. One is your help on those claims in actually getting to resolution. Now, as John said, resolution could be that there, there genuinely isn't any coverage. It was never intended to be covered. And so the resolution, maybe it's how the conversation is managed in a sensitive and effective and professional way. It happens. In others, many more, the resolution is about there's been a situation and we need an outcome and we need to resolve it and we need to help the insured get back on their feet or defend a product li liability claim, for example. But what really matters is getting to resolution. Absolutely, that's what we want to do. The longer the situation is unresolved, the greater level of dissatisfaction everyone will have and the greater cost there will be. So the key pin is resolution and then our reserving. So one is about the outward looking piece to the client and one is about our financials, which is we, we absolutely need to be clear on what our numbers are. Because with numbers clear, we can look at creative opportunities for resolution. We know what the uh, range or the range of opportunity might be in coming up with a creative solution and we can work with you. If we don't have the numbers, then that makes it incredibly difficult for everybody as well. But packaged around that, around what really matters, you've got these other things which are so key. You know, understanding the insured business, I question our industry whether or not we work with you enough before you go on site on major losses, for example, or, or difficult situations. Do we share enough information with you about the client? Do we walk through with you what our strategy is with the client? How important they are to us, what we're planning on doing if we're looking to increase our involvement to help you frame the visit, the engagement and the discussion? An open question. If you ask me to call it, I'd say we don't. In some instances, I'm sure there are some. But getting under the skin of that insured's business because they will know their business, and as you know this, because you've been doing this a long time, they will know their business better than ever we will. It's just not possible for us to understand their business to the degree they do. But the key clearly is about us as professionals getting in there and understanding that business. How can we get them back on their feet as quickly as possible? But also through that process is getting the message right. You know, as we engage with them, you engage with them, getting the conversation, getting the dynamics right, getting the empathy right at the right moments, getting the clarity. 
protect the relationship that we've built up through the underwriting process, through your engagement. <coughs> so every touch that you have has an impact on the relationship. So we do hugely value your skill to manage your way through those relationships and those discussions. And, you know, maybe, you know, we, we are without doubt in a technologically driven world. We should be more. The value of face-to-face -face engagement. Are we using it enough? And actually should carriers travel more with you to meet with those clients that are affected, to have some of those conversations around the table, to build those relationships? I'd suggest the answer to that is yes, without doubt. My um, old uh, director, who's moved elsewhere now, told me that if I was still wearing the same pair of shoes at the end of the year, I'd failed. I, didn't, I hadn't travelled enough. So um, buy more shoes now. Skills. I, I think there are three really important skills, and so does the market think so too, is the ability to look at the situation through a commercial lens. And to do that, to look at that situation you're facing through a commercial lens, actually you need something from us as well. You need to understand how much we value that client and the degree of flexibility we're willing to, be, to have in place. But you still need the ability, and we need the ability and capability of our professionals out there to identify those commercial opportunities and present those, to bring those back to us and say, this is what we think you could do. This is, this is what you could do. And be creative. Because, as, as, as John alluded to, and you will know, these businesses are facing some pretty tough economic challenges out there. They're trying to grow, they're working against their competitors. It may be that we have to be creative to help them. Keeping clients is so important and therefore the, 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 the flexibility for creativity will naturally be there. It has to be there for all of us. Um, project management. Jonathan um, alluded to it earlier. You know, how, how so often you become a project manager, managing multiple uh, expertise under your umbrella. It's a huge skill. Um, are we investing enough in that aspect around the project management? Because it, it is a skill to do that. But all of those actions, the way that you engage with the client, the way you engage with us, one of the most important things for us is that it all inspires confidence. Confidence in the client on the ground when they're facing yourself and the, the situation, but that we, when we've appointed professionals, we can have confidence in them as well. If we've got confidence in the professionals on the ground working for us, <coughs> it changes everything. So key. So seek out the opportunities to demonstrate that capability and it will create flexibility. And reporting, Jonathan has, 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 has flagged, but Clearly, there needs to be high caliber reporting. Um, and without, Kerry will jump on me, um, rightly. Um, you know, high caliber reporting isn't about 175 pages. It's about precision and clarity. And maybe the challenge to the insurance industry back is, what is it that you want in this new world? Is there a model report that we need to be moving to that is actually relevant to this new world? So as an example, I met a, a, a law firm from Chicago two years ago, an opportunity we didn't grasp, should have grasped. They have built a new interactive loss report. So it's, it's, it's not paper. It's not PDF. It's actually interactive. Astonishing. Absolutely astonishing including the video of the lost site, the interviews with the people, maps that are interactive. Absolutely mind-blowing piece of uh, production. That's where we need to be. And it's totally achievable. Totally achievable. So the takeaways, what are the takeaways I'd offer? And these are being offered. 
there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that you as professionals are part of our community, part of our team, but you have the ability to be a critical, and I don't use that word lightly because you know, urgency, critical, is used a lot, isn't it, in our, in our industry. Sometimes not relevantly, but <coughs> you really do and really are a critical contributor to attacking the life cycle and driving resolution. Yeah. Such an important part of that. Um, you directly, absolutely aid our retention of our customers. Your performance has a direct impact on our ability to keep customers. And in the current climate, that's what we want to do. And we need your help to do that. Um, the service level agreement world, the metric world is here. Fact. Let's not challenge it. Let's accommodate that, but focus on the key things as well, which is about how we engage with the clients, how we get resolution. We need to measure, without doubt, but measure the outcomes. So let's focus on the outcome that we're trying to deliver. Um, I, I'd, I'd call it, and it was coined at the Silla Conference rightly, the skill set that we're looking for from the industry now is technical pr plus. Use the expertise, the technical expertise, clearly that you have. Absolutely, that's why we're buying you, what your services. But actually, what, given the challenges we're facing around customer retention, competitive professionalism, you know, we've got these competitors trying to win business from us, is we need the extra layer now. We need the extra layer. Your skills and your ability to engage with our clients and help them get to the fastest possible resolution. That's what we need now. Now, this, this is the point at which I hope that they'll be able to cut the video and stitch it back together. I'm looking at Paul, Paul's smiling, thinking, well, it depends what he says, which is fine. Um, so, because I've got a few minutes, I just, just, I'd like to make some observations about these pictures, but I'll do that with a, with a small story. So, usually when I travel around the world, I usually find myself getting into trouble in some way with immigration and customs. That's why we're saying we need to cut this out of the, the, the final cut. It's not for anything around drugs or anything like that. Uh, I have an Australian story I could tell, but I'll save that for next time if Paul invites me back. But the, the, the story I'd like to tell is, is one about US immigration, because these are pictures from Matthew that's going on you know, right now. But the story is about US immigration. So in 2005, I was flying into Florida on the back of the hurricanes to do what I considered to be really quite important work around the insurance industry's response to the hurricane. And I was feeling extremely good about that, rightly so. And I'll come back to that in a minute about us as a group. But in 2005, you might remember those who traveled to the US, you used to have the immigration cards, which you had to fill out in hand. So now we have the electronic esters. But in those days, you had the individual cards you had to fill out, one for customs and one for the actual um, immigration, the visa. I'd left filling out my card <coughs> to the very last moment. And then I scrabbled around on the plane. The plane hadn't landed. I scrabbled around for a pen in my bag to fill out the form. And the only pen I could find was a red one, red ink. Now, those of you who've been to the US are already thinking, this isn't going to end well. So red ink on a customs and immigrations visa form in the US. 35,000 feet above the ground. I was feeling pretty confident that I could, I could manage that through. Now, I'd been to the US several times, so I knew it could be challenging, but I thought, I was feeling good. I'm 35,000 feet above, about an hour out. I'm feeling good that I'll be able to get through on red ink. As I got closer to the guy at the customs desk, twitching on his handgun, calling people forward at the immigration desk, my confidence began to diminish. It's getting lower. And I stood there waiting for him to call me. It was my turn coming up, and I could see he was going to call me. And I thought to myself, if I don't take control of this situation right now, I am going to be ejected to 
to the back of this queue, which is about 500 people by then. And I really, really didn't want to do that. <laughs> so I thought, I have to try and take control of this situation. So he said, next. I marched forward in my best British accent. <laughs> I said, I'm terribly sorry. I only had a red pen. I do apologise. He looked at me. He looked at my form. My heart is racing. He looked at me again. My heart continues to race. He looked at the form. Then he looked back at me and he said, Sir, he said, what business are you in? And I said, insurance, proudly. And he said to me, I thought so, sir. Red for blood sucker. <laughs> <laughs> now, so I've told the story, but what's the relevance? So let's tie it back. And that story is fantastic for telling at uh, conferences and dinners. It, it, it's, it's great. I roll it out reasonably regularly. Aus the Australian one's good as well, but I'll save that. But let's bring it back to why we're here today. <coughs> um, because I completely g disagree, and you'll disagree with those comments that he made. We're not that at all. What we do, what you help us do, is we repair, we rebuild not only the infrastructure of places like this, but also these people's lives. That's what we do. So we should be proud of that. Now for us, whilst we take the risk here, we underwrite the risk, you help us deliver our promise to our policyholders. Collectively, we are one team, we are one community. And the challenge for us is to communicate so that we know what we're trying to achieve. But actually, we, as a team, we respond to that, those situations. And we should be incredibly proud of that because we do some great things as a, as a, as a team. So, on you know, Matthew, as we've seen, and with the Bahamas and Haiti, which is a you know, terrible, terrible situation, the thing, the essence that we need from professionals like yourselves is to help us deliver what our clients are expecting. That's the key. Thank you. Thank you.